Before we get started with today's video, don't forget about the giveaway. A complete AN 8009 multimeter kit. It's being sponsored by Banggood and it is available to subscribers to this channel anywhere on earth that Banggood delivers. So all you need to do is watch the video for the giveaway down below and comment on it and on September 3rd which is Labor Day here in the United States we will draw the winner and our good friends at Banggood will ship it out to you. Don't forget check the link, enter the contest, good luck to you, big thanks to Banggood. Now to today's video. Hey what's happening guys? <clears throat> Today I thought we could talk some about diodes and in particular what we're going to be talking about is diode recovery time. So I've got a selection of four different diodes here. The first one is a 1N4007 which is your standard uh, silicone small signal diode. This is a 1N5400 which is a uh, larger rectifying diode but basically they are the same they are a silicon junction diode uh, next we have a uh, Schottky diode this is a 1N5817 I believe and finally we have this diode here <clears throat> excuse me which is a sintered glass ultra fast recovery time high avalanche diode it is a BYV26CV so for our setup we're just going to do single diode rectification I've got a, a 10k resistor here we're going to probe with the oscilloscope and we're going to watch what happens so let me show you the setup over here is my function generator and right now we're putting a, a 60 hertz 2 volt peak to peak sine wave into our test setup and if we look up here real quick at the oscilloscope you can see channel 1 the yellow is the sine wave that we're inputting the 60 Hertz 2 volt peak to peak so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clip <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna clip the ground lead here to this ground connection and we'll probe the output of the diode and then we're going to turn up here and take a look at this on the oscilloscope so again yellow is the pure sine wave coming in the purple is our rectified and at 60 Hertz you do not see anything dropping below uh, the zero line which is actually it's this flat line you see right here you see where those two line up so that's zero volts so obviously it's 60 Hertz and anything slower this is going to work just fine now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take it up to 1 kilohertz I have to adjust my time base here but at 1 kilohertz you see we are still fine there's no um, recovery time problem it stays above zero volts at all times 2 kilohertz looks fine 3 kilohertz looks fine 4 now look what you see here at 4 kilohertz you're starting to see just the slightest dip below so we would say that 4 kilohertz is the cutoff for this that's as fast as this diode can recover because as we go up the dip becomes more pronounced until obviously we are dropping below all right no problems there now I'm gonna take this back down to zero and we'll go back to 60 Hertz so we'll move over and we'll take a look at the uh, 1N 5400 which is the power diode and like I said they're basically very similar diodes so we're gonna see very similar things there we are at 60 Hertz let's go up to 1 kilohertz 
adjust our time base. Now I see at one kilohertz, we're seeing the slightest dip two, and we obviously have a dip below zero. So above a kilohertz, the standard silicone diodes are having a problem. Let's go back down to one kilohertz and we'll jump over to the Schottky diode. And we'll probe the output from the Schottky. And everything looks pretty much hunky-dory at one kilohertz. Let's take it up two, three, four, five. Let's go up to 10. I'm just gonna zoom in here. 10, we're looking good. Let's go to 20. 20 is looking good. Let's go to 100. Give me a second to get up here to 100 kilohertz. Adjust our time base. And you can see that shock key recovers much faster. Let's go to 500K. Okay, so now at 500K, we're starting to see a little bit of a drip below zero at the beginning of the blocking portion of the wave. And if we take it up, there's 900, and we're at 900, we're obviously below the zero point. So I'm gonna take this back down, and we're gonna go to 1K, adjust my time base here, which I probably just did in the wrong direction. There we go. So there's our <coughs> shot key at 1K. Now let's come down here and look at the centered glass diode, the ultra fast recovery time diode. Mm, pardon me, at 1K, which you can see there on the screen. Beautiful. Let's take it up to a, uh, is that 1K? No, well, it's close enough. Okay, there's 1K. No problems at 1K. Let's take it up to 10K. I mean, obviously there's not gonna be a problem here. 10K, we're just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it up to a megahertz. Okay, so there we are at one megahertz. And you see, even at one megahertz, we're getting a little bit of a drop down. So let's take it down. We'll go 900. So at 900, we're good. I'm sorry, that's 100. 200. Where are we at now? About 400. And at 400. So what are we seeing? Well, what we're seeing is that this expensive ultra fast recovery time diode behaves no better with recover in regards to recovery time than the shot key diode. But there are reasons that you would want to use this ultra fast diode and not the shot key for this reason or for this type of situation. The shot key has some reverse loss, whereas this is made not to, and uh, has a better voltage rating, but you can pick different voltage ratings for different diodes. You know, there's nothing that is stopping you. But there's a reason we don't use shot keys for rectification, and that reason is the reverse leakage. Now, if you're look looking for something to put into a, a switch mode power supply that you're building or a buck or a boost converter you know if you stay at a hundred uh, kilohertz switching frequency any of these diodes are good you know the plain old small signal diode or if you're gonna have some uh, some higher current then you could go with something like this power diode or is gonna work fine remember you want to avoid the shot keys in power supplies because of that reverse leakage but if you're going to get up there to a high switching frequency, say, you know, 200, 300 kilohertz, 
then something like this is going to be what you're looking to have an ultra fast recovery time diode so i hope that you guys learned something from this on the different types of diodes if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe a big thanks to all the patrons out there who have supported this channel with their donations allowing me to buy things like expensive little diodes and uh, share them with you so anyway that's it i'm out peace